You're back with another one. This time we got top 10 most underappreciated anime of 2020. And, uh, it's by Vinny Tube. Y'all know it. Y'all recognize it if you didn't know it. I don't even have to scroll on it. Y'all don't know. Um, Vinny Tube, yeah, let's go. 2020 has been a wild Did I say 2022? Year. That's an understatement. I meant 2020. In the anime industry, however, it will forever be considered a year full of ups and downs. The industry is actually so strong right now with the plethora of sequels and great shows in one season alone. What a way to start off the decade, huh? As I often say, though, this creates the inevitable... Hey, hey, I know what this is. That little girl... Isn't that that one where she turns into a cat? I, I stopped watching that about halfway through. I was like, no, no, this is stupid. This is dumb. Situation she's where there weird. Are some shows that she's get weird. Overshadowed like, by of course, she's not going to love you. You're weird. The series that seemingly grab the anime world by the neck and are the only ones that the community can talk about. I watched this no week, anime in 2020 also. Shows from 2020 that deserve oh, prime more pandemic. love than what they're nine. getting uh -uh. at the time of writing this. Before we start, I'd like to encourage you to subscribe. And if you enjoy Vinitube content, let's work together to hit that next milestone for this channel. I was working hard as hell. Prime pandemic. It seems that once in a while you have these school setting shows where the focus is about a human and a ghost or some spiritual being teaming up to deal with supernatural threats. Heck, winter 2020 had two of them, albeit with completely different approaches and settings. I think that on paper, not a lot of people would find toilet-bound Hanako-kun anything too special compared to Inspector, its primary seasonal comparison. But that is to be expected. It seemed to be your relaxed action comedy, almost sort of like a wackier version of Inspector. However, I think that Hanako-kun really takes it to another level with the chemistry of the two main characters. The characters in Hanako-kun are a joy to watch, especially the main lead. I also liked how the arcs are quite quick and enjoyable, and they easily flow into one another. Is toilet-bound Hanako-kun an unpopular show? Not by a long shot. Is it better than a lot of people give it credit for? I definitely think so. Ooh. Up next at number 9 is Darwin's Game. <laughs> okay. Smartphone death games, citywide battle royales, logical leaps here and there. It sounds like the formula for a forgettable seasonal edge fest to me. By all critic measures, Darwin's game has all the check boxes ticked for seasonal trash, but it's actually a lot more enjoyable than most people give it credit for. And I think that in anime, enjoyment is king. Yeah. I said it. Maybe it's because I'm a big shonen or action light novel fan that I have the amazing ability to suspend belief or overlook things in favor of flair. But Darwin's game, I believe, is a lot better than most of its relatives. It's great at setting up cliffhangers. How the characters are written and how they interact is my jam. And I think that Ganame's growth from start to end is really a pleasure to watch. If you're in for some high octane action and popcorn entertainment, pick this show up or another similar show that I'll be talking about later on the list. That While Darwin's Game? Check out the manga for Darwin's Game as well. Mm -hmm. It's at its last arc and things have taken a huge twist and shift in tone. That sounds lit. I'm not gonna lie. It reminds me of like Batum, but I hope it's finished actually. My next life as a villain. this villainess? next one a kind of pioneer for the genre. My next life as a villainess. The reincarnated as a villainess plots pretty much become a genre now. But I think a lot of you had your first exposure to this it. anime. I personally had that experience too, and I have Guardian to say I enjoyed okay. the whole ride with Katarina through and through. I don't know what the secret was. It could be the well, charming episodes, not charismatic that characters. It could be the fresh take on the isekai genre being an Otome reverse harem and all. It could even be me finding stakes in Katarina's quest to avoid bad endings. But whatever it is, there's a lot to like about this funny and entertaining series. The show got quite the following when it did air. However, once the season finished, not a lot of people really talk about it much anymore, which I think is a big shame. I won't say that the show's a masterpiece or anything like that, but I did think that it would be the flag bearer for the reincarnated as a villainess genre to start taking off into the somewhat mainstream. In a way, I think it has kind of done its job. Rank 7 in line is Fog Hill of Five Elements. Oh, this is. That's when it came out? 2020? I was just underappreciated. There were so many this lists no that this was on. This list. I've talked about how much I like the short series for many videos now, and the show has virtually no traction. That's understandable given its nature, but I'd like to once again encourage you to watch this show. Being much shorter than a full anime series, Fog Hill is easy to go through, and for the short running time, you get treated to a lot of amazing fight scenes and unique art style that gives its own signature flair. The story is also pretty decent too, but I think that the animation and art direction is really where Fog Hill shines. You'll be hard pressed to find a lot of titles that are as good as it in these departments. Watch out, I'm telling you, Chinese anime is about to take the world by storm.
いらっしゃいつけてみるかい Yep, this is the one. Yeah, she turns into a cat. A whisker away is our sixth entry. I was like, bro, this is stupid. Away is one of the 2020 anime films that generated quite a bit of buzz when it was first announced. Then circumstances forced it out of theaters. Then it became a Netflix movie, and then it ended up being a one and done thing. Come to think of it, I thought that it would end up having a fate like this. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, yes, but I really think I that without、so、the messed up situation of the world at large, a whisker away could have been a lot better and definitely more popular. After watching it, I really don't mind that it's not on par with, say, a Miyazaki or a Shinkai film. Leave the comparisons and the expectations aside, and a whisker away ends up being a whimsical and fantastic okay, adventure、cool. into the、um, beauty of magical love. It also helps that Mario and Bowser are at the helm. I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna have to finish it. Speaking, it really makes me. Feel That it's a Disney film, but in anime form, with the way it、yes. looks and how the story flows.、Yes. With that being said, you should give this movie a watch if you haven't done so yet. It's a fun adventure that would provide a fun way for you to pass a weekend with the family or your loved one. At number five, we have. I just have the feeling that.、Uh, also, I find it. I find it cool when she jumped off that thing. She landed on her feet because she was cat, and cats always land on her on their feet. But um, I had the feeling that they're going to end up as both living as cats. And like being like, forget this human stuff. And like, I'm not with that. I'm not with that. One, I already don't like cats. So that, that was like a strike for it. I was watching it with a friend and I turned that off halfway through. I was like, bro, this is one, boring, two, stupid. Like, I did feel like I was watching a Disney movie. Like, because the unrealistic expectations of how she's acting versus what she wants. It's like, bro, you have to act a certain way to get, to get what you want. He's obviously not into you, but you keep. Like, yeah, and then you know she's gonna get him at the end. It's just like, nah, nah, I'm not, I'm not fitting to. And then at the time, I was also going through some stuff, so that also didn't help. <laughs> so I, I might have to finish it. It looked kind of interesting from the from the、uh, couple of shots they showed of that underground looking like city, pretty much. I didn't, I didn't think they were gonna explore outside of their town, so. I've got Gucci got though. Kotosan no kakushi got to. Yes, I'm hurting. Yes, I'm jaded. When I first read the synopsis of Gakushi Goto, I immediately thought of the infamous Ero Manga Sensei, a far more wholesome take on the secret identity storyline and minus the incest subtext. Am、mm? I the only one who thought of it in that way? However, when I was done with Gakushi Goto, I got an experience closer to Usagi Drop. Now, it's certainly a great way to subvert expectations, right? Gakushi Goto is primarily a comedy, no doubt, but it does have a lot of genuinely touching and heartwarming moments that help complete the experience. The characters are easy to sympathize with, and I know some of you can also relate to. The situation of having a double identity. I know I certainly did. When Gaku Shigoto was airing, I didn't notice that much traction on the show, so I included it in here because I think it's severely underrated. Come in for the comedy, and you'll come out with some feels and some honestly dramatic and melancholic moments. Cool, cool. Rounding out our pre top three is Gleipnir at number four. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That did come out that time. I saw it on Funimation randomly, and I was like, yo, this l o o k kind of cool. Okay, so this is the show that I mentioned back in the Darwin's Game entry. Like Darwin's Game, Gleipnir deals with the idea of a survival game with gifted people gaining powers from a supernatural source. While I like the overall character designs for Darwin's Game more, Gleipnir has far better production values and a much darker tone and atmosphere. Just check out the top 10 fights video that I'll be linking up there and be amazed at how much effort's been put in this show's animation. Personally, I just like how all in Gleipnir goes in its gritty survival premise. While Darwin's Game operates more like a traditional ensemble, Ensemble Shonen, Gleipnir decides to skirt classic conventions and deal with more morally grey perspectives and a revenge storyline. The atmosphere is also darker and more of a mystery. While I stick to the belief that dark doesn't equal good, it works like a charm in Gleipnir. The only downer for the show, in my opinion, is its kind of nonsensical last episode because they wanted to have a climax with the last boss fight, but the manga version of that fight is a bit far off from where the episode count ended. Taking advantage of the barren、oh. spring season, Gleipnir got some traction when it was airing. However, I think that barring circumstances, the show would have got And buried in obscurity given its state in the community right now. It does deserve more love. Really, it does. I mean, that also was a short episode count, wasn't it? I think it had like 12 or some episodes. I just look it up real quick. I'm still on the Funimation app. I don't know how to spell that though. Gleipnir. I'm just going G L I. Or G L. I'm just going G L E. Okay. 13 episodes. That's another. That's a one day. See, I'm gonna I'm just start knocking these out on my next off days. I'm just gonna be in here watching anime all day, all night. Because I'm 
dead ass. I'm I'm on a I'm on a streak right now. I've already watched two. I've watched Tokyo Avengers. I've watched uh, Reincarnated as a Slime. I'm about to watch Jujutsu Kaisen, Vinland Saga, um, um, Gladnir, uh Darwin's Game. Those are those are the next coming up ones. Mashoku Tensei, Tensei, whatever. Uh, Jobless Reincarnation. That that one. After going through the synopsis and getting the general feel of the series, I knew immediately where Dorohidoro would be in the anime popularity ladder, so to speak. Dorohidoro prides itself on its black comedy, crass humor, over-the-top violence and gritty atmosphere. It doesn't exactly tell the story of an underdog learning to survive the dog-eat-dog -dog world like what Vinland Saga or other similarly dark shows would have done. Speaking but being of Vinland Saga, didn't funny. follow the traditional formula for mainstream success. However, I knew that with how all in it went on those mature themes and story execution, that it would find itself as an underrated gem by some people. Kind of like a cult classic. She's really out here that's kicking exactly ass. what it became. In a season with Haikyuu and other shows with more mainstream appeal like Bofuri, Dorohidoro is probably at the exact spot where I expected it to land. Still, if you're up for some mature and wild entertainment, Dorohidoro might just be the hidden gem for you. Almost making it to the top, but not quite. Second place on the list goes to Decadence. <laughs> I really like Decadence. I know a lot of people have written it off as just another derivative of the Attack on Titan formula, but with the season's close, I really think that it's ascended and come to its own over the few months. Still, I can't understand why it doesn't seem as popular as something as good as it would warrant. The crisp and fluid visuals aside, I do admit that Decadence does take a while to kick things into a high gear. We've got the amazing fight in the opener that I talked about in a previous video, but it did turn out to have a pretty slow start. Overall, I like Decadence because of how original it feels. You can quickly tell that a lot of love and care has been put into crafting it. It's world building is good, the characters are fun to watch, and there are many themes that you wouldn't expect from this series at first glance. Stop sleeping on decadence, guys. I think I've Standing seen at the top this time is seen that one time, like anywhere. Like I've seen footage from it one time. It wasn't like an episode, it was just like a trailer or something. But it did interest me. I never got the name of it, but now I know decadence, cool. Cool. Invaded. Cool. When It Invaded came out, I was sure that it was going to be the hit of the season. Who doesn't love a cop show with a lot of psychological thriller elements? Not exactly too many people, it seems. Now, this isn't a knock on the show and its fan base, but for something that looked like Psycho Pass, I expected a bit more pull and fanfare coming in. I guess it's the comparisons, though, to the masterpiece that is Psycho Pass, which makes It Invaded unappreciated. Setting aside the comparisons, I believe it was that great. it has a lot going the on for itself in its own right. At its core, it's a pretty nice sci sci-fi mystery that could have pretended to be a serious live-action crime drama. It also has a lot of well-written characters that avoid or subvert okay, the usual tropes that look like you see in the media. Yeah. So yeah, stop calling it a it poor man derivative of Psychopaths and give Id Invaded a shot. It's definitely going to be worth your time. A little bit more exciting than Psychopaths. Psychopaths look, it was more subtle with the animation. Like, there wasn't a lot of movement. It wasn't a lot of color. Um, but that one looks like it's a lot of color. It's a lot of movement. It, it looked it looked great actually. I'm be honest, with you, it looked kind of better than Psychopath, more entertaining at least. Psychopath was good, but it was just kind of like dull, just dull. Like that's all I can really say about just you know, Psychopath is good but dull. It's straight up. Uh, but I hope y'all enjoy. Like, comment, subscribe. Let's go for ten likes. If y'all like it, and it's not at ten likes yet. Just hit hit the like button. If if y'all chuckled at anything I said. Just a chuckle. Go ahead, like the hit the like button. If y'all agreed with anything I said, go ahead, hit that like button. If it's under ten likes, you know, just it's it's only ten. It don't hurt you. Just do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Alright, I'm out. Like, come subscribe. Do it. And I'm out. Peace.